This is brilliant. This is great. <laughs> Turn this into an NFT. <laughs> Don't do that, please. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where today, Ash and I are being put to the test. It is man versus machine. Can we beat AI-generated art? Uh, obviously, AI-generated art has been like one of the big talking topics towards the end of last year, early this year, as far as like, is this ethical? What's it going to do with artists moving forward? You know, hey, now that like chat bots can write essays, how do you determine what is a real human essay versus what is a created essay? Uh, you've heard me talk about it on the show in the past, if you've watched us before, that, you know, I've wanted to do a uh, an AI-generated game theory before, a, f a film theory, a food theory, just to see what it does and do, like, AI-generated weekend and the AI-generated thumbnails and all this stuff, which is just kind of, like, fun and, and tongue-in-cheek and just, like, a weird one-off to show, like, this is what a computer thinks of the stuff that we do. Um... And we've historically struggled to do that, things like that. We tried to do an AI-generated artwork one, what, like uh, almost a year ago at this point, right, oh Ash? Oh, gosh. Um, it was, goodness, it was back in like May. I was going to say it was like it. April, May time last yeah. year, wasn't it? And we, we started it. <laughs> this is one of those like <laughs> lost to the annals of time or lost into the archive where we started doing like, oh, Dolly was the big thing that was making headlines at the time. It had just released to the public. Everyone was like doing wacky things and showing their like work on Twitter. Um, and we're like, let's do that. And then we hopped into it. And I guess we were just like a couple weeks too early into it because the processing time was literally a day. Yeah, there was, there was this um, one AI site that I used my senior year of college to make funny things with my friend. Um, and it would spit you out something in like 10 minutes. But when we tried to do it for whatever reason, for whatever reason, and like we, it was one word we put in there. Yeah. We put in one word. Maybe that's why. Maybe we didn't give it enough information. It was like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare? Yeah. And they disrespect me. Think I could do that much with right. one little word. Right. Um, but yeah, it took, it said it, it took, was going to take a day. Yeah. It took literally all day. And we're like, well, that didn't happen. And then... The result wasn't even good. And the result wasn't good, and so we're like, this episode is scrapped. Like, it was it was a bummer, too, because yeah. uh, we had a banger of an intro. But anyway, oh, long, yeah, we long story... There are always bangers of intros. Anyway, long story short, AI is back in the news. There's a lot of talk about AI, and it, it has improved, right? Um, and so... And it's faster. And so today, we thought, why don't we do AI-generated artwork versus human-generated artwork? If you can say what Ash and I are about to present to you, the audience, as art, which it is not. It's not great. Um, but we're going to try, and we'll try to beat the computers at it. Um, the the one thing I... And it, this idea was originally born out of just a, a brilliant brainstorm that we had at the end of our Choo Choo Charles uh, ripoff game that we did. Like, we did a Choo Choo Charles, like, fan game. And at the end of it, we had a little extra time, so we started, like, just drawing valentines for for uh, horror game characters, uh, specifically <laughs> FNAF. And we're like, this is brilliant! So, if you were sleeping on that episode, if you haven't checked out that episode of us doing, like, Choo Choo Charles stuff, that was fun. If you want to see more of our artwork, uh, especially Valentine's Day-themed artwork, that one, it, go to the very end of that episode. It's there. Uh, but today, you get more. You get more artwork, and we're going to be duking it out against the computer. So, Ash? Yes. Uh, they have a... A whiteboard yep, yep. that you're going to be presenting your work with? Yes. Okay. And Good. Yep. And uh, I have, obviously, on screen, I have Photoshop pulled up because paint is, I mean, paint is great for what it is, but this will be at least a, a little bit more flexible. Not going to be good. Again, I'm not, I've always been terrible at artwork. My best artwork came when I was growing up, and I would look at old video game manuals, like the Earthbound manual from Super Nintendo days, and I would just go through and I would draw each of the characters. I actually like pointillism a lot because oh, it allowed yeah. me. That was the one thing that I was able to like focus in on. Oh, this is more shadowed. Oh, this is less shadow over here. And I was able to translate that into like dots. For whatever reason, when I was in fourth or fifth grade, 
we did a pointillism like unit in my art class. And that was to this day, I think one of the, the best I did, uh, Luca, because I would always bring in my video game manuals and I would draw the characters from the video game manuals. And I did uh, Luca or Lucca or however you pronounce her name. Uh, she's the fire magician who's kind of like nerdy. And, and I always like, I'm like, she's so cool. Um, and so I did a pointillism thing of her. I don't know if it still exists, but that was, I think, to this day, like the, the one piece of artwork that I'm most proud of in my whole life. Um, yeah, because I'm like, that looks like the thing. That, that's, th- they look the same. I translated it. But I've never been good at like just generating artwork off the top of my head. And especially like, I don't have the skill to make it happen. So by the time the workday's done, done. We put Ollie down and he's asleep at like 7.30, between 7.30 and 8.30 at night. You're so exhausted. Like I, I either have to go back to work yeah. and continue writing and recording stuff, or like I, so many of the episodes get recorded at like two in the morning at this point, um, or I, I'm just so physically exhausted. I just like veg out on the couch. And I'm like, okay, just consume whatever is happening in front of me. Uh, that's one of my resolutions here in 2023. Actually, is to do oh. uh, more non-screen time stuff for myself. Or do more productive screen time for myself. So not just, like, let me passively watch stuff, but let me, like, do a Lego. Like, I, I've got this really nice Lego set mm-hmm. that I'm starting to do. Like, uh, it's it's a the, an old NES. So I'm building oh. an old NES that apparently works, has some level of functionality out of Lego. Um, ah. so, so I've been doing that. I got a bunch of puzzles for Steph and I. Um, so we're doing that. I always watch new movies, so that's a thing. Like, I just consume a lot of movies. Um... But yeah, stuff crossword puzzles. I've yes. I, I've always loved crossword puzzles. So Steph and I both have crossword puzzles that we do at night now. So Aww, like that's that's, that's awesome. one of my things that like hey let's do non screen activities. Yeah, which has been a lot of fun. It's funny because like that's my literal resolution mm-hmm. is like I want to get back into my hobbies. Yeah. Um, you know because I spend so much of my time now yep. looking at screens yep. and doing work stuff where it's like. You know, there's other things I can do Mm -hmm. for, like, personal enrichment. Yep. So one of my resolutions is actually to, like, step back into, like, drawing and that sort of thing. So That's another one, too, where I have, uh, like, I've started to, like, make a list of books that I've always wanted to read and never got around to. Yeah. Or, like, ones that I should have read, like Catcher in the Rye. I've always, that's one of those ones that, like, oh, everyone should read this. And I was never assigned it in school. And if you weren't assigned it in school, did you really? Like, I read some outside of school, but you're so busy. Right. Um... So, yeah, that's that sort of thing. But we'll have plenty of time to talk while we do artwork. Oh, totally. So, welcome to another episode of us relaxing on the couch, talking about stuff while we do things. Uh, so, what should our first prompt be? Is there a way, a fun way that we can, like, generate a prompt? Let's see. Well, I mean, we could go to, like, some kind of random generator website. It's, like, generate me, like, a character or a name or okay. this or I do that. want it to be, like, a pop culture theme. So, like... Yeah. Like Pikachu doing something. He, okay. Um, Pikachu, Pikachu, uh, festive, exciting. Uh, cake. Uh, Pikachu cake. On a, cake. Pikachu on a birthday cake. Is he eating it? No. Uh, Pikachu is uh, sitting on the birthday cake and uh, he's, he's um, holding a fork. Yes. Pikachu on a birthday cake holding a fork. Okay. That Great. is our first assignment. Great. Okay. And then we'll put it into the AI. The AI can do characters, right? Yes. Right? I, I believe so. That's that's not like too uh, copyright unfriendly for them. Okay, so we're talking resolutions while we draw Pikachu. All right, great. With the birthday cake. So I'll be doodling on the yeah, whiteboard and trying to hold it away. And so I that am going to be apologetic to everyone uh, as you watch what I'm about to create here. Oh, so what rules? Is, is even... Are yes. we not allowed to pull up references? No, no, no references. references right? All off the top okay. of your head. Great. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Okay. Here's. The... Uh, okay. So. Resolution. So, yeah, one of my resolutions is more of that kind of, like, conscientious time at night Mm -hmm. um, before going to bed. Um, And that's been really fun. Or playing games that are just for myself rather than, like, I'm going to do this for the lore or whatever. Uh, And so I've I've mentioned Tunic here a couple times that that's been kind of, like, one of the games that I've wanted to play. uh, And I'm finally getting a chance to, so that's exciting. Um... But yeah, that idea of like, and and it's been so satisfying to do like an adult Lego set because mm-hmm. I've never really done a, a dedicated Lego set for a long time. Um, I did Legos a lot as a kid, but I haven't done Legos and especially like some of the like multi thousand piecers and this this thing that I got 
uh, has like 20 bags of, they break down this huge project into these smaller like bags of lego so that way you can kind of like keep track of it you don't lose things yeah um huh. and it's been so satisfying and i can start to see how i didn't know that legos had advanced to the level of like oh you full-on have mechanisms in here that can work right like by the end of this thing i'm gonna have like a very rudimentary like mario game that i can play um which is which is kind of cool yeah and a, and a tv screen that's able to to move so and you're looking to get back into your hobbies too? Like, are you, so are you going to start animating? Um, I'm considering doing that. Um, I do miss, um, like, I don't know. I miss the kind of, the way that it changed my brain and how I thought. Uh -huh. um, because I used to think of everything in, like, terms of animation. Yeah. Um, so when I listen to a song, I wouldn't like connect it to people. Yeah. I would think of characters that I had already made or create characters in that moment and have them like doing something to that song. Uh -huh. Um, and I genuinely miss thinking like that. Um, and it was also just like a really fun way to like, um, interact with other forms of media and get inspiration. Um, it's just like a cool... What can my mind do when, like, paired with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It was just, it was really fun for me. Um, and it was a good way to, you know, get my mind to think of different things and allow me to have silly and strange ideas. Sure. Um, what, so. would you, what would you describe your art style as? Because I've, I've never really seen a whole lot of your art. Well, I mean, you could always <laughs> be like, you could turn around. I give myself a challenge for the whiteboard in the back. Uh-huh. Um, I have to do it in like 15 seconds or less. Okay. So that's kind of where <laughs> everything there has gone on. Um, I don't know how I would describe my style. It's a good question. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, do you have a particular... So if you, if you were an animator, right? Like, do you, did you have a specific... Uh like character or like style of stuff that you enjoyed doing more so than than others or or did you find yourself gravitating to a certain type of i don't know like theme or subject matter more often than not um i think let's see i mean i taught myself how to draw with like pokemon and the uh -huh. um comic that i made myself yeah. when i was in like third grade um, I've talked about Ted Bear on this. Oh, of on course. This. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and your, Son your Sonic OCs. Yeah, yeah. That was actually a really big part of it. Yeah. Because um, I'd be like, ooh, I want to animate for, like, Sonic cartoons. I thought Sonic X was awesome. So I would make my own stuff. Be like, look at me go. I could do this. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah. So definitely, I think, more on the kind of, like, chibi side of things. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so... Woo! There we go. Is the is the color at the end of of Pikachu's tail? Is it black or brown? I feel like it's. It would be weird if it was brown. But I feel like it's brown, but at the same time, it feels weird to be brown because it's like, why would he have extra colors mixed in? Maybe brown. Let's try brown. Let's try brown. Like this. Uh, also, I've completely forgotten what Pikachu's eyes look like. I know whenever we do thumbnails with Pikachu, oh, this looks like he just dipped his tail in poop <laughs> or, or, or chocolate. <laughs> this is it's not great. Um, I, <laughs> it's amazing. The uh, we're, we're gonna switch it to black. Uh, <laughs> we're just gonna go with that. Um, but uh, I so when we do thumbnails, right? Pikachu is obviously the character that always appears in any of our thumbnails around pokemon Black feels wrong though um and so it's one of those things that i remember we always talk about like pikachu's eyes and about how you have like the the little cute white dot in the corner of his eye the like little light reflection over there yeah always is the thing that makes him look cute and so i, I and so i remember i remember that part of it that that we're always discussing the details of his eyes one of the things that always amazes me about the the graphic designers that we're working with is how they're able to like uh, they're again they're also really talented animators and the idea of they're able to just like translate emotions into the the just a, like the eyes and pupils of a character so quickly and easily 
and it and it always looks so good every time. Um, and 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 you start to recognize and and appreciate how much small details like the glint of an of sunlight in an eye or whatever makes such a huge difference in as far as like the mood of the character and the emotion that you're starting to sell it's pretty crazy yeah like artists honestly like when you think like when you it, it's something we see art all the time right but when you think about like oh my gosh like conceptualizing something and having the skill to put it onto a page and knowing like what colors to use where and how to accentuate that's beautiful matt thank you um it's like y'all are magicians oh it's wild isn't it yes it's great <coughs> all right your time's almost expired ash okay i'm just doing my finishing touches aka this pen is too wide for me to do my work you're doing, you're doing great thank you i actually I have no idea what ash is doing so i make no yeah, this could I, I suck, no and then everyone will be like, don't go back into art. <laughs> <laughs> the internet collectively is like, nope, stay where you are. Stay in your lane, Ash. Yeah, yeah, Doing it's great. fine. You don't need to. I promise that at one point I was really good. Okay. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is great. <laughs> Turn this into an NFT. Don't do that, please. Please stop. I'm some, that's, a, that's a trend that I'm glad at least has died for now. That whole thing. Oh, Ashes is so good. <laughs> Can I do a little? Ashes is really good. Oh, it's so good. Speed, speed. Okay. Yeah, here. Okay, here we go. So you see my monstrosity. <laughs> it's wonderful. I it, love it. It's a Pikachu with a pitchfork, uh, apparently <laughs> bleeding from the mouth. <laughs> This is supposed to be his happy tongue. He's is this cute. a happy tongue? Uh, <laughs> dipping his tail in chocolate poop and <laughs> standing atop a very rudimentary cake. What? Okay, so you have Dolly pulled up. Hold up. I want... What does Pikachu look like? <laughs> just, uh, just to remind myself. Oh, his cheeks! That was the thing that I was absolutely Wait, missing. Wait, did you not get the cheeks? No, of course not. Oh, oh I knew I missed something obvious. I'm like, uh, I'm missing a crew. There's the eyes. See, that's the little white ball. Yeah. The little sparkle ball. But when I did these black voids of eyes, I kind of started to freak out. And I'm like, this doesn't look like eyes. Then he's got his red tongue. Oh, and he's got the red cheeks. That's what I was missing was oh. the red joyful cheeks. Oh, man. Oh, see, that made all the difference. Now. Yeah, that transformed that character. It did. And now if I did this. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't getting better. Why is it not getting better? <laughs> I love him. He's giving he's giving me thirsty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So mine leaves a little bit to be desired, but I do appreciate my festive confetti and yeah. my cake turned out okay. He's this cute. is this is Ash. Oh, let me. This is great. <laughs> I love it. I love how cute he is. It's adorable. <laughs> Thank you. I panicked through some balloons at the very end. No, the panic drawing of the balloons, I think, really brings it all together. This Thanks. is wonderful. And he's got his cute little fork. It's a very teeny fork. It's very small. It's a, it's a very small fork. It's being too small. Okay, so here's so here's Ash. Let's pull up Dolly, shall we? <laughs> Let's do it. So it's Pikachu on a birthday cake holding a fork. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Did we beat the AI? I think Ash did. Oh, oh wow. This is pretty good. That's cute. These are good. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm impressed. What's happening in the <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Pikachu puking up a fork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Oh, This is good. That's cute. That's really adorable. He's buried in the cake. See, this failed the assignment. He's not holding. It said holding the fork, AI. That one's really cute. This is really adorable. These are these are pretty solid. And they didn't forget the cheeks. Uh, they this all is forgot the, the tail, though, except for that last one. Right? You got to have the tail. And I understand why, because the tail's behind him. So from a perspective standpoint, you know, it's like, oh, well, you wouldn't be able to see the tail. But the tail's the most important part. That's one of those things, again, going back to our thumbnail discussions, that were always like, oh, you got to show up Pikachu's tail. Yeah. Which is... 
Oh, it's... Oh, my God. Wait. Why did we both think that? Why did we both think that? Oh, my God. Like, I had the little lines at the bottom of, like, the base of the tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, you, yeah, you have some of the lines at the bottom. But here. I was like, oh, the tip. No, the tip is yellow. Right? Where did we come up with this collective delusion? Is this is this a Mandela effect thing? Well, look it up. It has to be, right? What, what would we look at? Let's see. Pikachu, Pikachu tail Mandela. Why do so many people that has a black tail? Pikachu's presumed black tail is often attributed to the Mandela effect. This is a phenomenon in which multiple people, thousands even similar. That's, yeah. That is wild. Whoa. That is wild. Wow. I didn't think it looked like this. Like, I, I thought it looked, I thought it was like this style, but reversed. Yeah. Huh. That's what. And you and I both had it. That's whack. That's crazy. And you were drawing it without me saying it, right? Yeah. Because I said it at a certain point. Is it is it a, a version of the Pokemon in the anime ever? It, what, it didn't look like this. It was more No, it was round. it had that like but little had ziggy Yeah. Whoa. That's crazy. It's nowhere. It's nowhere. Whoa, what? Does Pikachu have stripes on his back? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he does have two stripes on his back. I didn't know that. Huh. That's crazy. That blows my mind. Huh. Whoa. All right. We've just discovered. Not only have we discovered that, uh, you know, that Ash is a, a phenomenal artist. Oh, thank you. But we've also <laughs> discovered that you and I both suffer from the same Mandela effect illusions. Yeah. Wow. That's wacky. That's whack. That's. Good night, sweet prince. Unbelievable. Okay. New. New idea. Okay. Um. We should do what's a, what's a character that they would know, and uh, by that I mean the computer. Mario. Mario. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. They would know. Okay, so Super Mario. Mm -hmm. Okay. Delete this. Yes. <laughs> um. Please. Super Mario. Because because I don't know. I don't think they would know Freddy Fazbear, would they? They would. Maybe maybe you could do like animatronic bear. Mm. Robot bear. Robot bear. Robot bear. Because I don't think I don't know if maybe. Uh, okay, Super Mario. Super Mario. What's he doing? What's he doing? Um, yeah, give him a verb. Uh. Hmm. S strutting is really hard. Um. <laughs> Super Mario strutting his stuff down the street. <laughs> no questions asked. Um, oh, man. Okay. Super Mario strutting his stuff down the street. I don't, th I don't think anyone's going to be able to do that. Sure, yeah. We're going to win. We, we got this one, Ash. Great. Okay. Super Mario strutting his stuff down the street. It's too high. Nope. Uh, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, how, well, how's the street look? <laughs> how's the street look? It's fine. Off in the distance. This is clearly... Oh, it looks off in the distance. Okay, there. It gets wider as you get closer. It gets wider as you... <laughs> Perspective is not my thing. Oh, I am so bad at artwork. It is so bad. Okay. We're going to do him and the street crests over the hill. That felt better. Okay, that feels a little bit better. <laughs> That's at least passable. Um, and we've got the green of this. Okay, so... Man, artwork. Are you so? Are you hype for Super? Since we're talking about Super Mario, <laughs> are you hype for Super Mario Land, the Universal Studios Super Mario Super Land. Mario Land? Yeah. Um. Ooh, I haven't thought about it that much, honestly. It because I believe at this point it's open, right? Oh, is it? Yeah the the new like theme park Super Mario Land at um at Universal Studios in California. In Los Angeles, I believe. Whoa. I think it's open at this point. I, I mean, that'd be really cool. I've never been to Universal. So Universal... He's way too big. Universal in California, and maybe people will feel differently about this or oh. will rake me over the coals for it. It is a very cool location because it's on top of the Hollywood Hills. Like, you are at the peak of the Hollywood Hills, right? And it's right there in central, L uh, right there in central LA. And so that's cool. Um, but it's because you're so strapped for space, 
it makes it uh, it makes it a little bit hard to actually have a lot of stuff there. So you're you're kind of limited on your land. Uh, so that's the biggest thing that I would say is kind of a, a, a knock against it. But it's but the space is cool. Nope, they have a lot of really fun rides there. I think the rides are actually really solid. It's also a I would call it a half day park if it hadn't been for the rides like the lines for the rides for like harry potter land and stuff mm -hmm. um ooh, ooh, so it feels like it's not a fully fleshed out park but they charge you like disneyland prices oh zoinks yeah and so you're like wait i'm paying the equivalent of disneyland for something that i can mostly do in a half day had it not been for like how long it takes me to get to like the, the rides um you're also getting a heavily reduced Harry Potter land because you. I, I don't think they have Hagrid's uh, motorcycle tour or whatever. It, whatever the like Hagrid ride is in the Florida Universal, which I have not got a chance to ride, but I hear is great, and I'm very excited about. <laughs> There's that Mario Badonka dog. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, all all the memes yes all the memes of mario's butt coming out of the mario movie oh man there it is uh i've, I've made them come to fruition um but yeah so that's so i think universal is a really cool park it's really fun and it's very unique feeling yeah. it feels very la it feels very hollywood and you look out and on a beautiful on, on like a clear day it's like gorgeous but mm. Yeah, the the fact that um, the the fact that it's a half park at full prices is tough. Yeah, at, that's a little brutal. Yeah, at um at Halloween time, it's a little bit different because they do the the horror stuff really well, and they have a lot of really good horror mazes and things like that. I'll just keep his butt. <laughs> they have a lot of really good horror mazes and things like that. But uh, as far as like going as a like normal park, it's a bit harder to sell. Mm. Were you much of a, a theme park person? Um, I mean, I wasn't able to go to theme parks that often. Yeah. Um, but I love a good coaster. I will say that is, I love North Carolina a lot. I like living here. But the one thing that I don't love is the lack of parks. <laughs> yeah. They, we do not have any theme parks around here. And that hurts me. We have Carowinds. Where's that? Is that Central? Oh, you haven't heard of Carowinds? Uh, okay. I've heard of it. I don't know much about it. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know quite where it is, okay. to be real with you. Um, but it's Have you been? Not... No. Okay. I only know about it as like a concept. As, <laughs> as I just wanted to stand exists. up for North Carolina for a second. Sure. No, totally. I mean, right. I'm, I'm, I am game. It has always been my goal in life, and maybe one day I'll get a chance to do this. It has always been my goal to set a world record for most roller coasters ridden in a 24-hour period. Ooh. Uh, oh, just, yeah. Just because that seems fun. And it's one of those things that... So if, if we have good coasters around here, count me in. Sweet. Okay. Right. Mario nice. is giving something. Is he? In this. Is, is your Mario given? Because my, my, my Mario is... He's a taking. little rough because of the width of the pen uh-huh um but he's doing his best okay there we go strutting his stuff <laughs> favorite mario game Ooh. um i mean i grew up on galaxy so i feel like i have to say that Ooh. oh but galaxy is one better than two that's always the controversial opinion oh man um this is him strutting this is the movement. I really liked, um, I really liked one. Uh -huh. um, I don't remember much of two, but I remember enjoying two a lot. Uh -huh. Two was the one that was much more like um, level based as opposed to like open world based. Yeah. It, it was pretty good. I don't know. I feel like I have a soft spot for one. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm... Sorry, I'm so... Wow, I just looked up. <laughs> this is cursed. This is, this I is where not. we get to the point where Matt, Matthew doesn't process people's faces. <laughs> cursed Mario! I have not been looking at your screen because I've been so, like, focused. Yeah. Um, it's going down like a Probably street. for the best, honestly. It stays. 
I don't think anyone needs to look at my screen right now. I'm so sorry. Okay. All right, we're, we're going to pull this back from the brink. We're going to pull this one back from the brink. We'll, we'll save it. Okay, we're not going to save it. Yeah, we're, it's not going to be safe. Okay. You got it, Matt. There we go. Uh, what color are Mario's eyes? They're blue, I believe. Nice deep shade of blue. These beautiful crystal blue eyes. Pools that you can swim in. Yes. <laughs> Pools that you can swim in. Swimming in them. All right, there we go. Hello. It's me, Mario. I'm gonna play. Okay. There. Nope, that's still red. There we go. Nope, oh, this way. There we go. All right, there. Galaxy. Great game. Yes. What about you? Uh, I think it, it's funny. I think everyone has, like, a preference for, like, what their first one was. Yeah. Because my first one was definitely... Well, it wasn't my first. I actually grew up in the era of... Mario 3, mm -hmm. but the first one that, like, I myself played and, like, really felt good, it, like, this was, it was my Mario game, yeah. was Super Mario World, which I think was really good. Is it the best? Ah, what, would I, what would I say the best Mario game is at this point? I really like 64, even though 64 oh, is yeah. very rudimentary. Yes. 64 is, like, to me, the perfect balance of... The Mario formula, the challenge is dialed in at the right level. The mechanics feel good. Um, and while I loved Galaxy and Galaxy 2, I feel like exploring the worlds and the paintings of Super Mario 64, it's like they, dial they dialed it in for the perfect amount to me like there's the right amount of gameplay in there there's the right amount of um difficulty and you can explore the level but they don't overstay their welcome whereas some of the galaxies feel too constrictive in terms of what you can explore yeah the some of the missions are like too quick some of them take too long you're hopping between all the different things in galaxy like that that bothers me about galaxy and then in galaxy 2 it's so level based yeah that you don't get to really immerse yourself in a lot of the worlds no either. i get that yeah and no so, you're right and so to me i think that's the, that's the stuff that i like about 60, 64 is like the perfect balance of all that stuff and i didn't like odyssey because there were so many moons i i liked odyssey from a mechanic standpoint i didn't love odyssey from a like i didn't feel rewarded or challenged in that game there were so many moons and you were falling over the moons. And so any individual accomplishment never felt like you were like, I worked hard to achieve that. Or like, that was totally warranted. Like, I had to do things. It was more like, I found a moon as I was running along and it just happened to be there. There's something to be said for like the mission-based stars of Mario 64 where I'm like, that's the right amount of clue to give me. I have a vague idea of what I'm supposed to do to get it. And I have to take a couple steps to get there as opposed to like, just find the moons and they're everywhere and good luck. And you'll find 999 of them. And you're like, I, it's like, okay, I guess many. if you're, if there's a thousand collectibles yeah, and that's your big collectible, yeah, that's too many collectibles. It was a lot. Like, I like that, you know, you just found which ones that you found and you could advance the level. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, I finished Mario Odyssey in like less than 10 hours. Right. It, yeah. If... I wanted I finished it to be it so and I'm much like, longer. Yeah, I finished it and I'm like, that was it. And then I went back and got all 800 moons or whatever and that you get to like go to the darker side of the moon and the challenge levels. And I did all of that. And I'm like, I, yeah, but I didn't really feel accomplished doing it. You know? Right. Like some of the hard levels, like towards the end, the darker side of the moon and stuff, like I enjoyed those. Those were really fun. But at the same time, I was like, well, one, I had to grind so many kind of boring moons to get there and then and then yeah i was like well i beat the main game so quickly and there was so little incentive afterward for for all the extra stuff i, I just didn't love it. it it felt like an unbalanced game i liked some of the worlds but yeah. also a lot of the worlds felt empty to me like the sand kingdom there's just like huge stretches of you're just like rolling through sand forever i'm like okay like, okay fine i guess yeah all right, I'm just gonna finish. Like, and and <laughs> and again, like some of the powers, dinosaur is cool. Like everyone remembers dinosaur, but it's like you don't use it for anything. Like the powers never really were used except for like the water jetpack one. 
in that one bubble yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. And so that was the other thing where I'm like, this is a cool mechanic. I thought Mario Odyssey had a lot of good ideas, had a lot of good worlds, but it just wasn't dialed in the right way. Like, I wanted to use more of the capture abilities to, to do more stuff. I wanted to do more with some of these worlds and, and explore more of their details, but everything was, like, so superficial. Yeah. You know, like, congratulations, you're a dinosaur. Plow through a couple blocks. And and that's it. And that's what you did as a dinosaur. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like the 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 dartboard birds where you could, would springboard and stuff. Those were the ones that like felt like they had actual like gameplay. But all right. So this is my Mario <laughs> strutting his stuff. <laughs> He's beautiful. I love the hill in the back right. Who just. <laughs> Not a fan. No, he's he's my neutral hill. Because, you know, we all know in the original Mario games, the hills are alive with the sound of music. Uh, I love... This is great. But I like that you're contextualizing his butt is not pictured. There it is. This is ashes. It's great. The mushrooms look awesome. Thanks. And I, and I get the... See, the strutting, the verb, is an important verb. Yeah. I, I get that he's strutting. Yeah. My Mario is literally just... Wow. <laughs> He's presenting you his rear end, but that's about all the strut you're getting out of him. This is great. But not pictured. You also gave him the little stars. Yeah. The little, like, strut stars. Mm. He's, he's got sass. He's got the mm. sassy stars. This yeah. is great. See, it was rough with, like, the thickness of this pen, though. I mean, it looks good. So. All right. So this is Mario strutting down the road, right? Yes. Super Mario. Superior Mario. Superior. Strutting down the road. That's it. Right? That was our yeah, prompt. that's it. We'll see. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm concerned. You know, <laughs> this this comes closest. Oh, this is pretty good. This is this is stomping down the road. No, he's in a rush. He is he is angry. This is angry Mario stomping down the road. <laughs> There's a major sewage leakage in New like, Donk City. I got yeah. <laughs> I got stuff to take care of. This, what is he wearing? Like like dish gloves? Like, d dishwashing gloves? <laughs> this is my favorite. This is the winner of this batch. That... I love this. This is a mood. That's an album cover. This is, it is! It's an album cover. This is a mood. This is... This is a mood. Mario on his day off. He's on this hot girl walk. I love it. I love that all of them are facing away from the camera. They're, like, outside of this one. Yeah. But all of them are just, like... Mario walks away dramatically from the camera. That is a win. Oh, that is wow. a win. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I want to get some variations of this one. Let's see, because this one, this one was probably like closest to the the eight bit one was really good. Yeah, they didn't really get the strut. It didn't get the strut. It got stop angry Mario strut. Wow, there's there's your there's your very they, they stayed very in line with it. They're like, what if we gave him green gloves instead of blue gloves? They're really into those like awkwardly colored gloves, aren't they? Yeah. I wonder why. Also, yeah, see, what what is that? Is he holding a green screened hand? <laughs> <laughs> like that's Yoshi. That's the remnant of Yoshi. Oh no! He's holding the remnant of Yoshi. Oh, buddy. Oh, uh, I'll never let go, Yoshi. I'll launch you. I'll launch you into the fiery pit, but I'll never let go. Right? What is that? It's that's a good question. I don't. I'm concerned. Just a little, and then that. It's weird, the little yellow thing. He's got like, is that his like spare mushroom? Just, it's just like spare. This is like handy dandy. That's oh. where he stores all the extra items. His little handy dandy mushroom off to the side. Oh wow! And they just never show it in the. Why game. does he have dish gloves in all of them? It's so odd. Yeah. Strutting. Strut. Strut. Strut your stuff, Mario. Okay. You know what? Round one went to the AI. Round two goes to Ash. Thanks. You have ten credits left. There I you go. Thanks. All right. Ugh. Next up, let's go do another one. Um. Okay. 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 Um. Let's see. Let's see. What's another character? 
Let's um, do. That's white. I guess I could do. Another character. Let's do. I mean, we could do a, a, fn a FNAFy one. Yeah, we could do. We, we could, could do, try. We could do. Yeah, we could do that. Um, we could do Freddy. We could do the puppet. We could do Bonnie, Chica. Um, I'm, what's the one that they're most likely? How about? Oh, we could do Purple Guy. <laughs> I mean, oh, it, but yeah. they give us some weird stuff. They give us some weird things for Purple Guy. They give us some weird stuff for Purple Guy. Yeah. I think we should do that. Purple Guy? Purple Guy. Okay. Purple Guy. Stuffing a something in a, in a bear costume. Sure. Okay. What, what should he be stuffing? Um, Sonic. <laughs> oh wow, Sonic! Okay, purple guy stuffing Sonic. The, 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 the AI is gonna love this. Stuffing Sonic into a bear costume. Yeah. Okay. Great. I, I'm gonna love this one. <laughs> this is oh man, this is bad news bears. Literally. Um. Okay. Here we go. I don't even know where to start. Where do I even want to start with this one? Okay. Let's start with the bear. Let's see what we got. Freddy Fazbear. He's got. Does he have. See, it's interesting. I've, I'm so fixated all the time on like the number of buttons and the the fingers and the toes and this and that. I don't know if. Is he like a traditional bear that has like a differently colored center and outside? No, it's all just the buttons, right? He's all the same color. In my mind's eye, I picture him all the same color. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Um. So, Matt. Did you get a record player? I saw you got a record player. Yes, I was I did. gonna. I was gonna be cheeky and be like, "Did you get a record player?" But you got one. I did. I, I did it. get a record player. You're totally right. Um, it was this year's YouTube gift. Ooh. Actually. Really. Yeah. So every year, YouTube will give you or like tends to send us a like, "Hey, you're an important, you're an important person for this platform." Uh, thank you for all the work that you've done over the last year. You know, we appreciate your videos, whatever. And so every year they send you a kind of, uh, like a little thank you gift. I, I've mentioned this before. One year it was an NFT. Uh, that was like what last year's gift, I think it was. Um, but yeah, this year they asked us for our preference on like, hey, is there a video that mattered a lot to you over your career on YouTube? Um, is there a like moment that you were most proud of? Is there, uh, you know, all this stuff. Also, do you have a favorite genre of music? They asked and, and this and that. And so I'm like, wow. you know, so we filled it out. We said like, oh, the St. Jude stuff, the, the streams there, that was a personal favorite, like one that we're really proud of. Um, there was stuff around... You know, we said like, oh, what's what's an episode that we're, you know, is a personal favorite of ours from over the years. Uh, I forget which one we said for that. But um, but yeah, so like we, we filled it out and you never know what you're going to get. Uh, a lot of times it's like a YouTube bathrobe or it's a, I'm trying to think, uh, they, they would send us um, like a YouTube bathrobe was one year. They sent us... Um, some oh some uh, custom uh, skates one year. Ooh, uh, so that's that pretty cool. cool. Yeah, like like the it's it's always like one of my favorite things towards the end of the year because like oh I'm always curious what they're gonna send and it tends to always be some fun and it's it's very thoughtful that that they kind of do that sort of thing. Um, this is me playing with perspective and that was a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> that was a terrible terrible idea, Matt. Uh, I don't know why I decided to play with perspective, but I have, and now the die is cast, and I regret every minute of it. Um, <laughs> you're doing great, Matt. You're so sweet, Ash. Thank you for being paid to tell me nice things. Um, that's so, that's not in my contract. It is not, actually. <laughs> it's not in your contract, so I appreciate you making me feel better about my artwork. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I... Uh, so this year, yeah, they sent, so they asked about all this music stuff and they're like, what's your, what's your favorite? So they sent us a record player, uh, which, you know, was unusual and unexpected and, and it's, and it's cool. The only problem is, and, and they sent us not only a record player, but I, I thought they were going to like create a custom song or like work a song into us. They sent us an album jacket 
And then inside the album jacket is like Madonna like a prayer. <laughs> and yes. then on the back of it is like, here's the thumbnails of the videos that you told us. And I'm like, what? So we told you this thing that's like uh, a personal favorite of ours and this and that. And they translated that to, okay, here are those thumbnails. And also here's a completely unrelated Madonna album. Oofa. It it's odd. It was it was odd. Like it was an odd one. But I am excited to have a record play. Like it's a, it's a cool record player. Yeah. The only problem with it is it doesn't come with uh, a speaker, right? It's just the player. It doesn't have any sort of amp or amplifier attached to it. Oh, uh, so it's just a turntable. It's just a turn. Yeah, it is a turntable. Yeah, that's probably the more accurate way of saying it. It is a turntable, and you need. To Bluetooth it into a, an external speaker system, which is also odd. Um, so that being said, uh, we don't have really any. We have Bluetooth headphones, but we don't really have any like external Bluetooth ready speaker systems. Um, and so it's all set up, but I don't have anything to play it on. So I'm, I don't know. Oh wow! I don't know, friend. Do you do you have any? Because you you are the type of person I would expect to have many records. And that would be correct. Okay, yes, good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I started collecting records when I was 11. Uh-huh. Um, and I have a pretty okay collection. Really? How many do you have? Um, I can't tell you the number. I'd say close to 100. Oh, wow. Okay. But, yeah. Um, I love my records. They're my babies. Uh-huh. Um, I have like OG like Elvis records uh -huh. um of course I have like the white album when it was originally printed because mm -hmm. like come on duh um <laughs> <laughs> come on duh uh -huh. come on duh like it's me yeah um so I have that um I've got a lot of different things but it's funny because it's cool to have both like old vinyls and records from like the 50s and then you're just like, and this is my Billie Eilish album. <laughs> that is, it, it's, it, it is interesting to me that they still publish records for modern artists. Yeah. Is it? I is, think it's fun. I mean, it is. It's certainly fun. Is it the, is it the sound difference? Is that what it ultimately is? The sound difference, but also like, I don't know. I think recently it's come back as kind of like an aesthetic sort of thing. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I just looked up. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. little dude. Yep, there it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I it was like a style thing. I got my record player when I was younger. Uh -huh. Um, because like, you know, that was when I was getting really into the Beatles and stuff, and I really wanted to listen to the music. Yeah. Um, the way that like it originally had come. Yeah. Out. No, of course that makes sense. Um. So it's been really cool to see more things go to, like, vinyl. Yeah. Of course, there's going to be, like, music snobs who are like, um, actually, blah, 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 blah. Um, they're just be like, get away from my, from my medium, from my blah, 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 the way I listen to music. Um, so I've heard a lot of annoying rants from people like that. Really? In the community, yes. You'd be so surprised of, like, people who are younger but get so snooty about today's music. Uh-huh. Where it's just, like... Dude, like, if you don't like it, you don't have to, like, make other people feel yeah. horrible or yeah. just, like, be a jerk about that's it. The, that's the thing I never really understand about the internet, right? It's, it's like, it, let people like what they like, man. Yeah. Like, why, why do we got to involve ourselves in other people's business? Like, when it's so harm, like, when it's harmless as, like, music, mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Um, But, yeah. I okay. How you doing? Good. I'm just coloring in a hat and then I'm going to be done. Okay. Cool. We'll see how this goes. Great. I'm done. You're done? Yes. Here, I wanted to add his little security badge. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, purple guy, stuff in Sonic, dead. Yeah. Into a suit. There is the, there's the Freddy head off to the side. It's a it's a Henry creation, so that's why he's got the, the metal bars on the sides. Here, let's see yours. Gotcha. Round three. Ooh. Oh, this is great. This is really solid. I like this. Thanks. This is amazing. This reminds me of the time that we had uh, uh, artist David Garibaldi. It was a couple years ago where he, we brought him in and he 
did like speed painting and we gave some of those it was like ten thousand dollars worth of artwork that we ended up giving away to the audience which was awesome oh that's so cool and so i, I wish we could do like something like that again where we could just give things away to the audience this is good what do you think I was like struggling to remember how purple guy looked with his pixels. This is this is about right. So plus, I, plus you're always gonna have to make some element of you know because he doesn't you don't really see him interacting with things, so this you have to make some considerations for that. Your Sonic is fantastic. You can tell that you've been you are very practiced at drawing Sonic. Okay. That you have like the, the Sonic <laughs> down. It's awesome. And I also love I also love the Freddy mask <laughs> in the corner. Yeah. You can out. This is great. Yeah, and the arms, the flapping arms, the movement. Ugh. Sense of movement is amazing. Okay, so this is going to be... Your Freddy mask, though, is pretty on point. You have the teeth. You have the chompers I do, down. I, I do have the chompers. The proportions you. are, like, good. <laughs> they're, they're okay. I didn't even uh, want to bother I, with it. That's why I cut it off. Right. <laughs> I do. At least, yeah, I'm able to at least keep things, like, roughly in perspective, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so this was purple guy. There's no way. Purple guy... We could say purple guy from FNAF. You think so? Yeah. Give it a, Does it know. know that? We'll, we'll figure it out. Shoving Sonic into an animatronic bear suit. Should we say Sonic the Hedgehog? Oh, yeah. So, yes. Uh, the, the, you so, know Sonic? What, so, yeah. So, come on. Sonic the Hedgehog. This, this, head. this Hedgehog. Okay. Purple guy from FNAF shoving Sonic the Hedgehog into an animatronic bear suit. I oh am, my god! I am curious. I think you might. I think you might win this one, Ash. That's my prediction. This is like, what are you asking me for? I was like, what? Purple guy, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh no! <laughs> what? Oh no! Oh, what has happened here? That is deeply personal. <laughs> Who's who is OCs? Right. Are... I th this goes deep too. Purple monkey <laughs> slow dancing <laughs> with blue bear in a suit jacket, no less. It like he's got he's got lapels. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I, this is a horror game. This is a story that needs to be told. I want the backstory of this right here. Yeah. I need this story. This is wild to me. Like, I'm terrified of them, but I also want them to live happily right? ever after. Well, and the fact, and it, the weird thing of it is like, okay, we said Sonic the Hedgehog, we said animatronic bear suit, but the, why? They, they gave us a bear suit, but why does it have no eyes? <laughs> why does it have no eyes? This is wild. This is also strange. This is like the bite of 87 right here. That that is the bite of 87. This is That's the, the bite of 78. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the oft forgotten bite of 88. 87 was the big one. 88 they went off the rails a little bit. No one everyone everyone gave up by that point. They're like, "Man, people keep bit, getting bit here." Another personal moment between these two. Yeah. <laughs> Bite of 88. That's it. <laughs> what is this? I like that it translated purple guy from FNAF as purple suit, I guess. Wow. Purple character. Wow. What is, is he holding a battery? A box of tissues? It's Here, like the, it's here's the, a box of tissues. It looks like the napkin dispenser it that does. they have at it like... Is. It's a napkin dispenser. <laughs> Wild. Oh man, the the little like the brown bear like looking at the dispenser like he's about to get like cut open. He's, he's getting like clocked in the head with the napkin dispenser. Oh. He's like, oh, oh brother, here we go. Wow. This, this is an intimidating character too. It is. I I don't know what he is. But he scares me. Because he's missing an ear. Yeah. Right? But he's scary. He's like a purple otter. It reminds me of um, Death to Smoochie. That was the, the Robin Williams like horror movie. Kind of like uh, dark. It wasn't a horror movie. It was like dark comedy movie. It reminds me of Death to Smoochie. Oof. This. This is. 
this is pretty visceral, right? <laughs> this is weird jester Sonic purple guy hybrid, <laughs> right? Because, I mean, you can see the Sonic influence with the blue. Yeah. You can see the Sonic influence with the nose because it's got that, like, Sonic nose. Yeah. Mixed with a purple guy. Like, shh, quiet. Like, it's actually terrifying. And the bear's, like, reacting. <laughs> the like, whole oh. big figure of the body terrifies me. Right. I don't like it. No, this this one's disturbing. And he's got pickles or what looks like jalapenos for hands. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, they look like sliced jalapeno oh, hands. What? Right there. What? Right? What is that? <laughs> oh, my God. These are wild. These are wild. Yes. Um, I I like them. A lot, actually. I, I... They don't match the assignment at all. Like, you won. Like, so humans take two out of three of these rounds. But these are fascinating. The I And I, and I think that, to me, is, is one of the most interesting parts of the AI artwork thing right now. Is seeing how computer brains, or these neural networks, process the information and spit something back out. Like... It very often is very strange and random and things like that. And you can, I, I think, picking apart the thought process of what, how it's trying to parse the information and translate that, I think, is what's really interesting. You know, that it knew, like, Sonic is not present at all here. No. Sonic is present in the blue here, shoving Sonic the Hedgehog. And it got, it got Bear Suit, a purple guy from FNAF, I don't know, like, maybe uh, that, it know. just knows... Shoving Sonic color blue, the hedgehog isn't present at all, into a, a bear suit. So I'm assuming the, the monkey is supposed to be the head. None of these translate hedgehog, which is interesting. No. Hedgehog is one that did not... Like, I can see elements of, like, there's the bear suit, there's the color of Sonic, there's the idea of shoving or silencing or stuffing in some way. I see a lot of those elements. And and suit. Suit. He's wearing a suit, right? Mm. Um... Which is, I think, is interesting. You you see this concept of a suit, but so, the hedgehog it did not figure out unless its translation of hedgehog are these back panels because you'll notice that all of them have this curtain in the background. Oh, that's weird, right? Huh? All of them have this like wrinkled curtain. Oh, that's weird. Why? Why would they all have a wrinkled curtain in the background? And this. Completely out of nowhere, here's a broken down, like, old radio TV. There's the horror, the Ugh, horror that's going to come out of... So, like, you know, we specialize in indie horror, right? Like, you know, we, we do all the, like, YouTube horror stuff, the ARG stuff. Like, the horror, I think, that's going to become... That's going to be generated off of this idea of, like, AI creating stuff or AI or originating things. I think it's going to go to some interesting, weird places because it... The computers are making connections that us humans would know better. Like, oh, that doesn't make sense. Like, you're not, you're not asking, like, it's not translating in the right way. But the computer is able to make connections that don't make logical sense to us, but make logical sense to it. And I think it'll open our minds up to interesting routes that we as humans then can go off into interesting new places and, and make into more sensical stories. Yeah. Um, and I think that to me is, what is interesting and exciting about this era, right? Like, it's this idea of taking computers and mixing in the human sensibility and creativity to make this interesting fusion of, of machine and man, which is is pretty exciting to me. Um, you know, but nothing... I, I think what we've seen here today is that nothing can replace the human element, which is Ash over there. Not me. No, you could you could replace me any day. Please replace this. AI art versus human art. How'd we do? Also, how are you going to do? Uh, I should have said this earlier in the episode, but if you want to do any of these and take more time with it, uh, let us post it on the Game Theory subreddit. Please, we'd love to see them. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to react to them in a future meme review or whatever. Um, and if you'd like to do this again, we should do this live at one point. Like, this would be mm. a fun thing to do live. And if people, like, were sharing this, I want to figure out a way to share screens so that way more people can. Because I think this is a really fun challenge. Yeah. Seeing other everyone's interpretations of a general prompt, whether it's a computer interpretation, human interpretation from someone who's actually trained in art, someone who's definitely not trained in art. Trained. Um, Whoa. You went to school. Yeah, but, like, I changed to theater, I mean, so. Still. So, anyway... 
Did you like it? Did you not? Let us know down in the comments below who won the ultimate battle between AI art and human art. And uh, let us see your stuff over on the Game Theory subreddit. And we'll be back with more gameplay next time. So uh, in the meantime, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. Thanks for being patient. See you next time. Mm.